Thompson with Palette Exposure, and we're here in Windsor, California, with Christian Karkas, the chef owner of Tisa Bistro. It's nice to be with you. It's a pleasure to have you here with us. You have quite an unusual background. I have followed you since Meritage Resort in Napa Valley, and um, I know that your food is very, very special. I want to delve into your background a bit. Um, where did it all begin? Tell us about your birthplace, your early inspirations, how did you get into food? I want to know it all. Okay. Um, I, I was born in Hungary. I'm Hungarian. I was born in Hungary. Um, back in then, there was, a, there was behind the Iron Curtain, uh, Russian occupied Hungary. Um, I grew into a family with uh, 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 my father was an artist and, and he, he painted beautiful murals and and then I think for some part of his life he you know like every every artist is uh, somewhat insane <laughs> you know, le le level of insanity required to be to, to be an artist and absolutely and, 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 uh, and my basically your family was very traditional my my grandmother come from the from the villages and they used to uh, farmers and they always had good meal at the table that was very very important um, we always had the Sunday Sunday dinners or lunches which are, uh, lunches and then and then when most of the time we always had the, the consomme like a hand consomme like you know that that's you know when you when they did the, the chicken soup or the American chicken soup actually it's it's when they when they, the best fit was always not a chicken that you they got the old hands mm. because it take a long time to cook so, so there was much better flavor. Those those older older chickens had. Patient food. It's yeah. Food. Yeah. Like <laughs> I remember, like my grandma used to have, like she get get up on Sunday, like really early, and then he had the stove in, in the kitchen, and, and then and then he or she always said when they when they when they, when they cook the cook the chicken and put the hand and. They always say this, when it's boiling, it's not boiling, it's curdling. So when the, when the fat was, you know, the, the boiling, okay, it's just like a, like a little pulse coming up to the, to the top, <laughs> top of the soup. So that was just like, the soup has to be like, like I, I, it sounds weird because I translated from, from Hungarian to, to English, but, but it's, it's creates a pulse, you know, and then it's cooked like four or five hours. And I remember she handmade the, the, the very thin pasta, it's almost like, a, like an angel hair pasta, but even thinner. And then, uh, and then she fold, folded the dough, and then she had a knife, she, she cut the dough with a knife. So she had, used to have a cutting board, and then the cutting board had like an indent, indentation, so like it wasn't flat because she always cut the pasta in the same same spot. So eventually after years, there was like, have, have, a, have a little like a well in it. So, wow. so, so it was always very important, the food, and you know, that there was like something like, you, you have lunch time, you have to sit down for lunch. If you don't sit down for lunch, you're not gonna get eat. What, not like that, but even like, if you don't want to eat, you still have to sit down for lunch. Like you have to sit there and don't eat. You know, your kids and I don't want to sit down. I want to do this, but then, but then, but we have to sit down. And, and so back to that hand consomme we had. So obviously they cooked the hand, and you first you eat, eat the broth with, with with the fresh cooked pasta in it. You know, the very thin pasta. And then you know, remember we always liked that like I a lot of pasta, something you know, a little pasta. And also the mid course. It always was the, the, the meat of the hen. So so they, they put them in a bowl, in a, like a big porcelain vessel, and and then uh, they usually make either like a like a rich tomato sauce with it, or mm -hmm. uh, or or uh, I think it's poison berry with a green with a green stripe. But I think poison berry sauce, so very tart and tangy, and then uh, I think gooseberry some, maybe. No no poison berry. Really? Yeah. And then oh. uh, no, uh, maybe gooseberry. Yeah. And then uh, and then usually that was your second course, and the third course was. Was either like you know schnitzel, or fried chicken, or you know depends on what what was the season. You know, then you know every every season had its own meals, and every holiday had its own own dishes. So it's it's, it's played very important part of life, like what you eat. Um, you know, I I, I remember we, you cannot buy strawberries in summer. I mean, in winter. Yes. So there was no strawberries in winter and so forth. So you you when you try to please. Please, your family during the winter. Um, you have to get creative. So that's that's what other chefs' creativity. I think Europe come from this older world. But when when we were we were I worked in a, in, in beautiful restaurants in Budapest. I remember the chefs has to like like crack their head, you know, during the winter time. So what we're gonna cook because they have to make the the, the, the weekdays to write weekly menu. 
So that was with handwritten with a carbon copy on top of each other, you know? <laughs> and, and then, you know, it, it, literally. And then, and it was just something, you know, when those scarce times became, required more creativity from the chef. Ingenuity. Ingenuity. And then, so that's what you come your, your queens, your chestnuts, your, you know, your potatoes, what you can create, potatoes, simple items, you know, carrots, you know? It's just, just I think, I think that's what missing a little bit of of today's cooking, we're, yeah. not, we're not forced to live with the nature because we can buy raspberries in January. That's sure. the, for, for, for us, it's still today. If, if you go back to Hungary and tell my friend, like, oh, you guys want to, you, now you can buy a strawberry, raspberry in January. We come from from Spain or sure. North Africa or whatever, but but it, but general public still don't buy it because because it doesn't taste like when the real the stars, the, the real st summer strawberries, they're so accustomed to that that quality of flavors of the fruit and vegetable products you just you can really sell sell for for for, for general public I, I think it's something like a curiosity something just a, a f fancy things you know um, to 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 uh, enjoy maybe indulge in it but mm -hmm. but uh, but I remember like two years ago I went to my mother's pantry and then Hungary famous from from because we have perfect climate for for peaches and apricots, the Hungarian apricot is very famous. And then, uh, and then I remember we went to her pantry, and, and she had a basket. She, she's like a, she always has a pantry, like a separate pantry, when the, she stores all your jars and you know they, they preserve during the during the summertime when you have so much fruit, they they, sure. they, they preserve them and, and then they make jams and they, you know whatever they do with it. And then uh, I remember she had a basket of of apricots, mm -hmm. and then I just. You know, I, I was here, I mean, even in the United States, you get used to see these perfect fruits and good looking. And, and then this apricot was like, it looked like almost the size of a, if you know what a, a almond looked like in a shell. Mm -hmm. Like an like unshell almond, like a little, like a little hard, little, like, like, they wasn't not peeling to the eyes, mm -hmm. eyes but I, I biked into them and it was just, just an orchestral flavors, just, wow. just, just, just my mouth is watering. Like exploded, to, you know, like when, when, you, mm -hmm. when, when you know, we went to wine tasting, you know, uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago yeah. with you, and then you introduced me some wine. It's just like you, you know, you, some of the wines is just your, 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 your give your mind and go into a journey. Yes. Like like all these levels of flavor, and complexity goes into it. Like, like and, and, just, and, and I was just dumbfounded as a chef in my mother's pantry to oh, have yeah. have these have these gorgeous apricot, the ugly apricot, but but it's essentially when you have when, when you have, she had to make a tart with it, she literally the apricot you have to do nothing with it. It's a sin even do anything with it. Just put on your tart and just bake it, and then your apricot will do the work. Wow! So clearly you've gleaned a ton of inspiration by what you were surrounded by growing up and watching your grandma cook in the kitchen every yeah. day and yeah. produce this. Mouth-watering dishes, literally from scratch. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, that had to influence you a great deal. It does. Yeah, I think my my mother was more influential, but 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 essentially, it's, I always searched. You know, when, when I was growing up, chef, it, I always went from try to different style of cooking, mm -hmm. and then and then I somehow we always bended back to what I come from. Oh. So this is what we come into full circle with pizza. So it's kind of oh. like. I, I I was I was thinking about like you know when the chefs try to like we all try to belong somewhere or somehow belong something you know the, you, yes. yeah you know and, and then and then I think what we embrace here and, and what how we come with full circle with the restaurant I I do not want it to be follow or or, or or be somebody else I I try to go back to this to this to the, exper to the experiences and you know I, I recommend recommend it for for all the chefs to try to go back where where he comes from because that's that's when your food comes from that heart. You know, you, you, you pour the soul to it, it's it make you original, make you different than anybody else. No, it's so true. Embracing your background and really translating it. Um, I think that's what sets you apart so much. I wanna dive for just a moment into your culinary background. I know you worked in some really illustrious restaurants around the world while you're honing your skill set. So tell us about that. Okay, uh, I, I, uh, when I, so I went to culinary school, all of this inspiration I got from, from, my, uh, from my family and then actually my mother, finally I think that was the, the final straw to, to 
school, I started culinary school um, in, in Hungary. But the time school, I used to work when, when you when you're a student in, in Europe, you have to work one week working in, in a real kitchen, and you one week, one week you, you you cook in the school, and then uh, and then. Uh, and I used to work for the scholar of Grandfather Last Story of Budapest, one of those you know, 18th century old old world you know, kitchens. That's when mm -hmm. I grew up. And then, uh, and then eventually, I, I when I, I went to uh, work for the probably the best chef in he was a chef, the chef in Europe. Um, his gorgeous kitchen was first. I I started there. It was like copper pans and it's very old world, like ra like railings and parts. And you 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 will see it in in a in a in a, like a cartoon, you know, like uh, you know, like, <laughs> like, like you know, just, just or just you see like in a, 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 a Julia Child world, you know. That's 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 where I, that's where we grew up. And uh, by the age of 24, I was a, they called me the rising star, mm -hmm. and then I I, uh, I uh, won some competition cooking. So I, I have a chance to go uh, work with uh, Paul Bocuse. Uh, wow. That's um, that's that's was, an that, that that was a. Uh, that was the first prize team to win this, you know, young and young cooks competition. Yes. So, the, so first and second place had a, had a internship with Mobokis. So the, was that? The, yeah, and then um, I, uh, I later on I traveled a lot. I, I felt the urge to to explore different things around the world. Uh, the culinary was always the my culinary skills was always like um, a common language mm -hmm. between continents and people and and. and and worlds, and it was it was just so easy. And then I, I just love love to be in, in, in just travel around the world. And I still find today a great connection with with, with when I met with people with different background to mm -hmm. to experience how they live, what they eat. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever we we travel in different countries. I love to go to grocery stores. So to, so like I, I love to see what people. But I always every country every country I have to go to the grocery store whenever I travel. I just want to see. What's available? What, what people buy? What how's everything look? And just kind of have a, a sense through that the culture I am in. Wow. And then um, later on, I I uh, I uh, came to America on and off. I used to work for a for for for, for a JW Camelback. It's an iconic iconic uh, resort in in in, uh, in Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona. And then eventually I drifted to California. I, I worked a couple of, like very prestigious. Uh, 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 private clubs, and, and eventually I got to got to Napa Valley through that round, mm -hmm. and make, make make my way up to north, and yeah. and then um, and then uh, about a year and a half ago we opened Pisa Pisa Bistro, and then um, we, we we bring in a, this old world feeling, what what I just described earlier, with try to merge it with, with with the current white country we can offer for us in here, the produce wise and. Kind of translate into a, 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 a different meaning, a different cuisine. Sure. You know, rooted in, in our past. You know, I know you've done quite a bit of fine dining, and clearly it's evident from everything you've described that you have exceptionally curious mind mm -hmm. in addition to um, a stellar skill set. You and I had a short conversation prior to the taping that um, I would like to bring up because I think it's um, yeah. fundamental to who you are, um, and that's um, the fact that you have experienced very early on what it's like to live frugally and what it's like to utilize everything. These days, a lot of chefs talk about cooking from nose to tail and you know really utilizing right, the animal and living from the land and taking it as far as they want. You know, foraging is a big deal. We've discussed that, but to you, it's an integral part of who you are and your beginnings. That I think played a huge role in forming the opinions um, of how to cook and what is the chef's point of view. And that is that acute awareness that what you have to work with, that maybe all you have is best. And you create the best value out of those ingredients. Um, so I just want you to talk a bit about that um, because I think, you know, in the contemporary world and you know, the way that things are, we have a lot of access to things. Mm -hmm. We pretty spoiled in society. But it's not like that everywhere, and it certainly wasn't the case for you. Yeah, I, we always felt we always felt that there was there was, a, there, there was great value to, to, to work when you're available. And, and plus they always tasted the best. Mm -hmm. But uh, but um, you know we always cooked cooked uh, essentially I think we 
everything's comfortable. Like I love to eat. Yeah. I just I just love to eat. I love to eat good food. Oh, good. And then it's, it's getting it, it's getting it's getting get, getting harder and harder. You know. You, you so so as I mentioned earlier, I, I I come from a very humble background. In, in in Hungary, so it was you know always a good eat or some some special treat was always the highlight. You know, many times I I, I, I talked to my folks like you know when 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 we had you know for example when when we had certain food we had certain attached to certain holidays. Sure. Right? So like Christmas was always duck. You know that or or like. A special, special occasion when we had veal. veal. Veal was something luxury. You know, we talk about like a vintage pizza made out of veal, but but in a true everyday nature, it's never made out of veal. So in our lives, that was that was the, the highlight. That's made it magic. These holidays, you know, that was that was something we look forward to. Then I feel many many of the younger culture, not the younger cultures, but I feel it's missing out of our cultures yes. to, to looking forward. To holiday Christmas comes. That was that was filled with with, with our food, and it's, it's it's translated into 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 some level of magic. So you know, when, when I remember, like you know, I, I tell you a well, funny story, but but you know, it, it, you know, it might be uh, uh, make curious from the listeners. But I remember when, 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 when my my grandma used to kill the goose. You know, we have roasted goose, you know. So Christmas, that was something I remember, like a golden roasted goose, and we just, oh, just can't wait the kitchen full with the smell of the... And, and, and remember when she killed the goose, you know, you know, you, you cut the, the neck of the goose and you bleed them out. So, so, so when we were kids, my grandma used to get the blood of the goose, and then she sorted onions, like when you kill the goose right away, and, and she cut, she collected the blood of the goose, and then, and then, she pan fried onions and then he sauteed the blood with the onions okay. and then and then we, we for us for, for that was a treat for kids wow so so it How was about a, that? Uh, yeah. a treat for kids <laughs> so, <laughs> so 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 meaning us you know that it's it was really important for for us to these holidays and, and then, you know there was there was we have to we grow certain appreciation to to things yeah. and then and it was not not the everyday coming to available for us. So that, that's 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 comes through our our our, our, our cuisine and and then those days was it was really really marvelous. Absolutely. No, I'm hearing a great deal of attachment and I can almost picture in my mind what it was like. Yeah. Um, you know we complain and justly so that our holidays became way too materialistic. Mm -hmm. You know, looking forward to opening some boxes and not to talk to each other, not to wake up to this atmosphere of generosity and goodwill overflowing. And I think that's what it ought to be about. Yeah, but you know, but, you know, I, I, I think it's the best, best to have it. It's, you know, sometimes like I, I'm getting older and older, I can get away from these materialistic things. I, I feel like I need less and less. I only, only I need a, a couple of good friends and, and, and a good meal to share with them. I, 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 <laughs> it's it's really what it is, and you know, I, and then what truly really makes makes me happy is like travel, travel, see see other people's culture, how they live, and but but really, it's just you know, I think the food is tremendously connecting us. Yes. You know, it's a common language, um, and then and then uh, this is this is what we do here, just very simple cooking. Um, Happiness, if it, you know, oh, yes. food and oh, yeah. food and eating is, is something you know. I always thought about what is food. Yeah. F food, food is food is home. Food is home. Food is happiness. So food is comfort. Indeed. So, something something you, you get away from the world and, and then and then and then you know, warm your soul. Yes. Um, those are not only beautiful words. Um, you back it up. When I first ate in your restaurant, I couldn't wipe the smile off my face. And for context, I ate pretty well in my profession. Um, and to experience something that was so authentic, um, it, it wasn't just a term. It really came from some place deep within you. I believe I mentioned it was like having you on a plate. Because it's not just a menu composed of dishes that are you know, well executed. It really showed me that um, 
without knowing as detail of the history as you just shared with us, thank you for that, that you came from a place where you wanted to feed people, and you wanted for people to be happy, and to have this experience as if they're sitting in the kitchen, yeah. and having a conversation, yeah. you, and, it, and that type of facilitating is rare. Mm -hmm. um, so, I'm so thrilled that you're here, and that you have this restaurant, because um, people that discover it, they become repeat clients and things. Um, and I could clearly see why. Because your menu is something that's absolutely craveable. Tell us more about it. Let's dig into how you've written the menu, why the dishes that are on it are on it. How did you put it together? Um, the dishes, uh, every dish on the menu has some sort of idea or story attached to it. They just not, not just grab from thin air, so I can tell every dish a little bit some how to get here. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a little bit. A little bit personal. I think it's very personal. We put in the menu. Great. Um, we like to. I have lots of traditional dishes, which I have been cooking for a long time, and I and I really, really um, like to share with our guests because because that's ultimately that's why we are here to to create and make you happy. I think I, that that's why we are here. Like I, I love to see when when guests leave happy. You know, like last night we had a full restaurant and. It really has like just such a good vibe. Every table loves everything, and you know we serve these, these little cheese biscuits, you know, for everyone. This kind of car, an amuse bouche or whatever you call it, you know. And it made out farmer's cheese, and literally this one one recipe. I stole it from her because so cool. we, because we, we try to get like our first, you know, we come, you know, try to do some pretty rolls or something with like you know rosemary and sea salt and whatever, and then mm -hmm. you know. The, the baker doesn't really was too flexible to do that, so just like okay, let's we have to come up with something. Yeah. And we just whipped it out. We made, we made like a farmer's cheese, and and then and then uh, and then and then just just some people they would just like to be able to take it to home and they want to buy it more. Of that. <laughs> and then and you then, created a monster that I have to keep making it. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and then uh, and then, uh, and then uh, um. So, so, and also we like to, of course, you know, play around with, with the ingredients and different things, you know, like, like we had octopus, which is, which is not Hungary, it has nothing to do with Hungary, you know, and then, and then, uh, but I, I, I combine, I try to fuse them with the Hungarian ideas, like about Hungarian sausage, in octopus, this comes the idea from the, from a lot of people so 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 with chorizo with octopus, so, that's interesting. so that's, that's, that's our translation, you know, in, in that chorizo idea, then also it's, it's expand because serving for the sauce gribiche because that's come from Escafier. Yes. So that the turn of the turn of a century, he, 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 he made that he made that uh, uh, basically that sauce. You know, I always adorn the adorn Escafier because all these co uh, styles and trends that comes rise and fall. But yeah, that Escafier is always he's he's whatever he brought to us is always still existing. Mean, and then it's timeless. I, I can attest to the fact that when I met Christian for the first time back in Napa Valley, um, I walked into your office and that's the first thing I saw. I saw a very well-worn tome by Escoffier with lots of notes and post-its and you read that book many times. It was quite evident. Yeah, they, they, there's, I get a lot of critique. It's like a, they, they call me like a dinosaur, you know, because <laughs> you know we, we, we all look into that. that, that, that you know, modern cuisine, but but I think we have to balance it a little bit. That's what I'm trying to do with this. So, like, so we have octopus, which is which is sous vide, an octopus, and, it, and it's, okay. so it's, a, it's a, you know it's, a, it's cooked in a vacuum bag basically in, in a temperature controlled environment, and then it's served with a with a turn of century sauce. So so I just you know it's some of the experimental ideas you know. That, there's a couple other dishes. We have a spatzel, we made, made, made a spatzel, which is, which is not necessarily German. We call them galushka. So there is, there is, you know, Europe, Central Europe is kind of intervening and it's rolling into different, different um, cuisine, but somewhat they, they're a little bit correlate to each other. Like there's, there is no really borders of, of those cuisines. So we call them galushka then, we have a translation of the American spatzel mac, but we, it's made out with, 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 with a spatzel. Mm -hmm. 
and then and then with, with mushroom milk and bacon and just really the warmth and flavor and the smokiness, the cheese melting, you know, it does or cheeses is baked in a cast iron dish, you know, it's, it's, it's really lovely. And then um, you know, we it also comes along with the Wiener Schnitzel, which is which is not which is not a hot dog. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, you know, Wiener Schnitzel is a, is a cutlet of Vienna, yes. and then, and then, uh, and then we, you know, as I mentioned earlier, it's a tradition of made it real, but but the general household are are made it with pork or sometimes yes. even with chicken, and and then and then uh, that's part of that's probably our, our biggest thing, so it's biggest item, the most popular item in the menu, and then and then you know, it took us a quite a good amount of time to. To figure out how to write, it took about six to eight months how to figure it out, how to make it really properly because it's true that this is pan fried. And then I remember, like, uh, in Europe, they, they, some of the old cuisine they have like a, a big flat top and they have like a heavy cast iron dish sitting on that on that French top. And then, and then they just finish this for like 20 minutes in like lard, you know, the, 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 the lard, you know, forget about you know, the, the lard, is, that's what makes it real. The, the, the flavor, that's, yes. the, you know, the, 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 the butter and oil has no flavor, you know, but the butter has butter, but the oil, oil doesn't have the flavor, so, so they said, you know, we, they cooked it a lot, which is, you know, Wiener Schnitzel eventually came across in a different culture for the Japanese, they call them tonkatsu, okay. and they translated, yes. and then, then in my, I used to live in Japan some of my times, you know, where they, all the chefs, they, they fry, and basically the, the real tonkatsu in Japan is fried in lard. Usually, all the every chef has their own uh, blend of oil, like his own secret components. How many days? How many days? And blend it together, just fried. But well, that's our biggest item, the Wiener Schnitzel. Uh, that's the most popular, and we try to get as as authentic as, as we can. But even some days, is, I find it is still hard. So you know, it's, it's something seems very simple, but then you dwell into the details, and then you know your how your expectation of your stuff is fall apart because because just you realize how many different ways you can go. Like if you if you look at it just try to perfect something and just every little steps count, you know, how how, how you get to that product. So so it's just, it's, it's it's a good experience. So it's a, but definitely the the Venus is is big and then we do a couple of chicken dishes and my wild mushroom cognac sauce which I will I will cook it cook it later. And, <laughs> I didn't warn you folks, it's a bit unfair. This episode was supposed to be getting to know Christian. But we got into food, and if you're hungry right now, this is really difficult because I had lunch and listening to him describe how brilliant and flavorful the dishes are. I'm, I'm starting. Um, but what really is special um, about every single thing that I've ever tasted that was made by your hands is that in addition to just crazy delicious flavors, you feel like you're getting such a huge value. I mean, not only it's a very generous flavor of food, but it's, you know, it's well-priced, and um, you just want to keep eating, even when you're full. I've never really had that level of generosity in any other dining establishment. I think it's it connects a little bit of to our culture, how, how because we come from this humble background we talked about earlier. Yeah. So so if you, if my job if you're your guest to, to, to fill you up. <laughs> is that is that does that make sense? It that, makes so much sense. You know that's that's I have to satisfy you. I don't want you leave you leave you unhappy or, or not not fully. I don't think you could if you tried. <laughs> and then I think it's part part of this, you know, this idea how how, how we try to please to generosity and good food and then something something every dish would have made we personally love to eat we cook it at home we, 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 we cherish it and you know sometimes we do it but it's come come full circle with the past yes it makes a lot of sense so there you have it if you want to be happy and satisfied head over to Tisa and beware, it gets full really quickly. It's a very popular spot. In our next episode, 
Christian will teach us how to cook a really kick-ass chicken cognac sauce. I'm really looking forward to that. Thank you for watching and please send us questions for Christian. Thank you.